right, welcome to the stream. And uh, let's do some epic. All right. So last time we talked about uh, there's this deck that I was working on. Where was it? It was Wild Ragnarok, I think. But anyway, we made changes to this one. Called it Citadel. Citadel Army. Yeah, because I was talking about Citadel Raven. All right, all right. Yeah, so there's this deck that I was working on, and then also we've played some random 30. So what I'm going to do is take this deck, and I actually have uh, been tweaking it a bit behind the scenes. So, right now I think it's called deck number 9. And this is what I've been working with. So it's a variation. I made a lot of changes. So, basically, uh, I decreased the wild roll a little bit. So now it's 18. I noticed that uh, I kept trying the deck out while I was trying to find like the right combination and it was trying to go to two places at once. So it was trying to be aggressive with cards like Rampage Tomorrow. It was trying to be slow because it wanted the late game for the Army of the Apocalypse, the Zombie Apocalypse. So I decided let's keep the evil wild theme and just we'll lean into the Army of the Apocalypse still, but instead just go more a slower route. So this is an attempt at that. Uh, I've decided to place in Kong and Jungle Queen here. So Kong is going to be a great card because it'll help us get rid of big champions and a big theme of this deck are just cards that you can't ignore. So we're going to do things like Kong. We're going to be playing Jungle Queen. That's our special card of the deck in my opinion. So Jungle Queen is special because you don't see it very often. Um, but uh, it's actually going to be very good here because what we're going to do is play this card, and then we have a lot of wild champions that are threats. So we have Kong, Raging Drex, and Strafing Dragon. Um, plus, we can also ambush out our zero cost champions like Cave Troll. Now, the big thing about Jungle Queen is that if we play Jungle Queen, our opponent doesn't want it to stick around because it lets us it lets us put anything important out on our opponent's turn. So it's a threat, and because of that. We're going to use this card as a draw card, and then it'll eat removal, so it'll get hit with uh, your opponent's Medusas or Drain Essences or whatever to clear the way for our other champions. Um, plus, if it does survive, then we have the opportunity to do things like Raging T-Rex on our opponent's turn, which is uh, really great. And because it has that passive, you can play wild champions as if they had Ambush, we're going to try and see if we can get value out of that Plus, it, uh, when we are with the Apocalypse, if that goes into play, then on our opponent's turn, we can play things like Kong or Rage T-Rex as well. So the idea is we're going to move away from the more aggressive cards, just kind of grind the opponent out, and uh, we're still going to play just value cards like Surprise Attack, Smash and Burn, Strafing Dragon. These cards are all just high, high power, and they're very versatile. You can use Strafing Dragon to remove a champion to deal 11 damage to them as a Punisher. Um, our only Punisher right now is Strafing Dragon, so that'll be our main weakness, but otherwise uh, we've got some Blitz Champions that are zero cost, and we are mostly going to rely on uh, just sticking things and then attacking with them eventually. So aside from that, I decided that this deck needed another way to clear the board, so Right now I'm playing Wave Transformation, which is nice because you wave their champions, and now they don't have a discard pile. And I cut the Heinous Feasts, I'm playing Corpse Monger and Guilt Demon, which both banish cards out of the discard pile with the champions. So these will be things that are just annoying for our opponent to deal with, we're going to keep using them and getting value out of them, and then they'll get back into play and be usable right away when we are with the Apocalypse. Um, there's some discard pile banishment with Amnesia and Erratic Research, and also uh, I really wanted to play both Amnesia and Frantic Digging because they're both cards that this deck really wants. Discard Pile Banishment and also just a way to uh, hate on the Discard Pile so we can use Army of the Apocalypse and Zombie Apocalypse for value. So that's going to be the deck. I'm going to try this out. I'm going to play at least one game with it. I think I should rename it. It's just deck number 9 right now. Um, and honestly, this deck's gone through so many iterations. So. I think I'll just call it um, the new Ragnarok. I don't know if I can if I can fit that. All right, hopefully. Let's capitalize that R there. 
Okay. So, in the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, there is someone in the arena, so I'll probably do a random 30 first and then jump into this constructed deck as well. Just because I do like to play the arena at least once during stream, and uh, right now it's random 30, which is uh, different than it's normally uh, cycles each week, so it's normally going to be a constructed or a limited format. But random 30 is really nice if you haven't played the game that much and you're just trying to learn you know, what the cards do, how to evaluate cards, you don't want to worry about building a deck. You just jump in, you get a deck right away, and you don't know what it is, so you just play with what cards you have in your hand. All right, so we're going first. Now White Knight is pretty nice because uh, it draws you a card when it comes into play. So this is a card I like to have in random three. And I also need to make sure I have an off turn play. So this Army of the Apocalypse draws me two cards as one of its options. And I like to have a card that draws me two cards uh, in my opening hand. So I'll keep both of those and then I can toss these other two. Uh, I want to find another white card, so I have low to two for this. Dead Mother is also a reasonable opening play, so I guess I could lead with that and then go for a White Knight maybe later. So we'll, we'll do that. I'll play this Dead Mother here. We'll try and save this White Knight for when there's an evil champion. Now, I think I mentioned this before, but Dead Mother is a solid card on its own. You play it, you get four bodies, so basically they're going to have to use a board clear to, to answer your play effective, uh, efficiently. Even if Escopeta here removes my dead mother right away, then what's going to happen is I'll still have these six wolf tokens. And on my turn, I can attack for a combined, what is this, 14? Plus this rally, people would make that uh, 18 if I want. That's a lot of damage. I'm expecting Escopeta to do some kind of board clear here. But this is random 30, so there's less of them. All right. It's going to get rid of my wolf tokens there. Rexa is going to deal two damage to each opposing champion and make two demon tokens. Revealing a zero cost champion and a one cost evil champion. So I'm going to draw two. No need to do anything else here. Now, right knight can come in value, can come in nicely here. It'll it'll banish that uh, Raxa for us. I mean, break it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and lead with that. Draw a card off of it. Reveal probably Rabble Razor. Well, I guess I'll reveal these two. Maybe I can get some value out of Rabble Razor here and break the Raxa, and then I'll pass. I'll probably attack with this, but I want to let my opponent. Spend their gold first. If if Escopeta draws two, I'll just attack. I wonder if the triple six means likes these demons. I mean, if, Sco if, if Scopeta had draw two here, it would be a good time. Because you draw two, go up to seven cards in hand, draw a card for your turn, you're at eight cards in hand. And then you can play an Infernal Gatekeeper that got revealed earlier. And you'll go back down to seven. So if you have more than seven cards in your hand at the end of the turn, then you'll discard down to seven. So what this does here is, uh, yeah, it's going to happen. Trying to figure out which champion to bounce. I think that's a reasonable play. I'm going to go ahead and attack here. I usually try and be proactive. So even though I'll lose this with uh, from both of those, uh, that's fine. Go ahead and drop this down just so that I have something in play. This will 
threatened to do something on my next turn. So I'm playing it now because it can't attack yet. And this card can get bigger. So every time you play another green card that costs gold, it'll get two bigger in both sets. And it's a Dark Knight. Just gonna attack me with that for five. Uh, there's no real reason that I should do anything about this. I'll just take it and that'll bring me down to 24. Now in general, you don't want to react with your gold first. So you have a gold on your turn and a gold on your opponent's turn. You want to save it for when uh, it's going to, uh, you have the most information. So if I, if I spend something here, maybe a Scopeta has a uh, removal, for example, something that's going to get rid of my play. Uh, so I'll, I'll spend my gold playing something and then they'll remove it. And it'll just be bad for me if it's some kind of removal, like a banishment that uh, gives them advantage. So in general, um, I just don't spend my gold first if I can help it. Sometimes you can't help it. Hmm. I make a lot of humans here, but I don't think it's worth it. Could strafing dragon and then attack for six and then a white knight to get rid of that. That's fine. Something crazy really. The thing is this is really big. But um I can block it with the rally of the people token. I'm just deciding whether to draw two or not. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and draw two here, just in case. Uh these cards are really relevant for my next turn. Now, the most I could buff this could be six if I played a one cost card, and then two would be eight, and then this would be nine. So I could get it to nine. Now, War Machine is a really nice draw because this banishes all opposing zero cost champions. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop that down, banish my opponent's zeros, which will be both of these champions. And by itself, War Machine can contest this uh, nine twelve. Um, and this is also nice because we're at eight cards in hand, so this will bring me back down to seven. So now I don't have to worry about um, discarding to maximum hand size. I mean, I probably would have just discarded Ralph Riser, but now I don't have to do that. It's even better. In general, I think this card's risky. I don't like to make risky plays if I can help it. Um, but what this card does is it makes you, it gives you a human token, then doubles your human tokens. So I actually have a combo in my hand. I could play this martial law on their turn, make five human tokens. My turn starts, play your operizer and use it going to 12 human tokens. Um, or even go rally the people, then operizer, go to 14 tokens. But uh, I'm really blown out by a flash fire or a wither. Um, and, our, and even just a board clear would not be good for me. So I'm not going to make a play like that. Now, uh, if I was them, I would just attack with this Vampire Lord. It has five offense and it's unbreakable on your turn. So if this attacks and I block with four machine, now Shambling Cart can attack. If this attacks and I don't block, I take five and they can figure out what to do with their turn. And uh, if this attacks and I block with the worm hatching, then I lose the worm hatching. So no matter what I do, this attacking is a good idea. And it gets bigger every time it deals damage. So they might as well get the attack in. I'll probably take five and, um, and that'll get bigger. But if I have a reaction to it, something that I want to do when it attacks, we'll get information out of that before, um, which is just better. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this. I don't think it's worth uh, I'm losing either of my champions. I mean, I could block this with War Machine to force this to attack as well. That probably would have been at least a good play, maybe even a better play. It just depends on what you're playing around. I'm playing cautiously because I have a very nice hand, so I can Strafing Dragon or Reveal 2 to deal 5 damage to this person and then also hit for 6. So that's going to be. Um, potentially 11 if they don't play another airborne champion. If they just pass here, I'm in a good spot. I can just attack with War Machine and then give it plus two, plus two. 
Um, yeah, those are both great, basically. <laughs> or even let the attack happen in Lightning Storm, if I really want to. Group attack, even. It's not bad either. Just because I have so many tricks up my sleeve. Sure, I brought my water here. Oh well. No problem. Alright, they're just gonna go ahead and, and sling this gin of sands at me. So, I'm gonna go ahead and play this Drifting Dragon here, revealing both of these cards to deal 5 damage to them. And then this Drifting Dragon will block that and I'll Wolf's Companion it. Now, I get blown out here by like a Vanishing, or a Rage, or a Lash. Lash isn't even that big of a deal. Pretty much just Rage, Vanishing, I guess also anything that uh, makes this bigger, so a Brave Squire or a Wolf's Companion. But if, if it's one of those two, I, I still won't take any damage, so it won't be the end of the world. And this is nice because this is what I was talking about when I was saying spending your gold first. They spent their gold first playing Jin of the Sands, so my I got to spend my gold stealing five damage to them and blocking it, and then I used a zero cost card basically to, to finish that off. Alright, so I'm gonna start my turn. I will group attack with both of these. Um, and then see what the opponent does here. There's a couple of things I could do. I could I could single attack with War Machine, but it's a bit more annoying now because I can't just give it, I can't just Wolf's Companion it to finish it off. So I'm going to group attack so that either Scopeta takes 16 or they have to block with something. And if they block with something that's very small, like a human token, they'll still take 5. If they block with, if they spend their gold, then their gold is spent first and I've got this really big Blitz Champion. If uh, this block happens or doesn't and they don't play anything, I can play this White Knight and take out that... Uh, Vampire Lord. So I've got a lot of good plays here. In a good spot. Pretty much got a lot of versatility in my hand. Not really forced into any play. Alright, they're gonna. Alright, that's an interesting option. Personally, I would have gone for the Necrovirus on War Machine and then block. Um, block Kark with the 6 6. Block the 6 6 with Kark. But it's greedier. If I had a removal for that, then uh, you'd be in a worse spot. So. I could do something greedy here, but I think I'm just gonna let this happen. I could, I could like lightning storm, deal two, deal two, deal two, and then they either take ten or they block, and then their cart dies. But this is fine. Oh, interesting. All right, that worked out great for me. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and lightning storm. Then we're gonna deal two here, two there, and then two them. So now. What happens is there's zombie dies, and then the war machine takes down this Kark here, and I my war machine survives, and their Kark dies. That worked out amazing for me, and I've got this zombie to block that vampire lord when it attacks. So, yeah, <laughs> that worked out great. They may have they may have some kind of weird damage to finish this off, but otherwise this is a very good spot for me. All right, there's flash fire, so now I feel much more comfortable about going into martial law. The martial law play. Like, I, there's a good chance when this attack happens, I'll just make five humans and block with one, since they can't have flash fire. Yeah, I'll probably just fight the people. White Knight's a good answer, yeah, I'll just try the people. Then if, because uh, human tokens don't actually do anything on their own, then uh, if they just do, do nothing, I'll recall Lightning Storm. I can White Knight to, I mean, not if they just literally do nothing, but if they make a play that isn't, that isn't an attack, like a Blitz Champion. When I say do nothing, I mean develop the board, or uh, not do something that directly affects my health or my hand, or... I discard pile. 
All right, they're gonna go ahead and reveal Drakus Enforcer to deal one damage to me. Great. Sounds good. Go ahead and get back this Lightning Storm. It's always nice to have something like that in hand. And then I can play this White Knight and break that uh, Vampire Lord. I'm very glad I did not play Martial Law <laughs> to make a bunch of humans. That would not have turned out well for me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and play this, uh, play this White Knight here, draw a card, reveal both these good cards. And then I can just immediately break the Vampire Lord. So we've gotten that off the board and drawn a card. That gives us a lot of value. They're almost definitely going to play that Draka's Enforcer here. So I'm getting low on health. I might be in trouble, but uh, we have a dominating hand. So assuming they do play Draka's Enforcer, that means they're going to have three in hand versus my six in hand. So this game is going to be about basically just holding them off for a bit while we stabilize. This is good for me because I'm not going to react to it, so I don't have to worry about them doing something afterwards. Like, I don't have to worry about this attacking, and then I block with the human token, and then they play Bout. I mean, that's not a good example. And then they play um, just something that affects both of these or uh, changes my plan. I don't have to worry about it, go wild on this or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and probably just make the human tokens with this. Arguably, I just should have banished all immediately and given them the four humans, but I like this line. It means I can just block this forever. I can race as well. I've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They don't have Rage or Lash unless they just opt-decked it because they didn't reveal it when they played this Draka. I mean, Scarf's Hound of Draka. It's Draka's dog. All right, all right, I'm into it. Infernal Gatekeeper, there's that Infernal Gatekeeper we saw way earlier. Gonna make some tokens to block my team. Go ahead and just immediately break that. And now I'm probably gonna have to use these human tokens to block random stuff. So I'm feeling a little bit silly about have having uh, about using that martial law there instead of a demon breach, but it's all in the past. The real question is, what am I going to do about this uh, airborne champion? And I'm not sure what the answer is. So, it's probably just going to be Rabble Razor and make a lot of humans and hope for the best. See, if I make a lot of humans, I can Lightning Storm in their turn to take out. I can do like a Spawning Demon blocks one. So kind of ride the people play. Yeah, it's just gonna be hope for the best here. I don't have any ways to draw cards, so I'm just gonna make a lot of humans, pass the turn. I'm probably dead. I'm gonna take seven in the air from that Dracus Enforcer, and there's nothing I can do about it. So that means I'm at two. And when you're at two, you it's very easy to die. You just die to a, to a sneeze. Very easy to die. All right, there's a courageous soul. That's going to be a problem. We got a lot of humans here. There's uh, there were four, so now there's ten. All right, let's see. Yeah, see, this makes this nine. So right now I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. Well, I'll toss two humans here, and we'll see what happens. Pretty sure as soon as this attacks, I'm dead. Yep, good game, scope it up. I don't have many ways to draw cards. Don't have anything in my discard pile that's relevant, so I am dead. Don't have any airborne champions to block that. All right, and you're gonna get some extra gems for winning. Congratulations. Boom.
And let's see. We got a Divine Judgment promo. It's always nice. That card ends up in a lot of my decks. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fire up a new game with this new constructed deck that I just made. I mean, I've been working on it over the weekend a little bit, so I didn't just make it, but I will open it back up again to show you what I'm talking about. So that's this one, the new Ragnarok. Now, basically, uh, I have been trying to get this Army of the Apocalypse to work, and I was really excited to build a deck with Army of the Apocalypse and Frantic Digging. So, this deck was originally built around Frantic Digging. It had some aggressive champions, like Rampaging Worm was in here. Let's see if I can get to it. Alright, Rampaging Worm is in here. The thing about Rampaging Worm is that it doesn't have any type of evasion. There was just one copy. But, uh, I also had um, Draka or Pyrosaur at various points. I had other burn cards at various points. There used to be much more wild cards. Instead, I've ch kind of changed directions. I've shifted gears. Now I'm playing more of a value game with cards like Gudgeon. I mean, I had Gudgeon in here originally, but now it's much more representative of what the deck is trying to do. So you play just annoying champions that do things. So I call them utility champions. And then uh, they are threats on their own. Uh, and all of these cards are meant to be threats on their own, but they also give you some kind of value right away. And once you get into the later game, your zombie apocalypses and your army of the apocalypses will turn on, and you can gain health with Drain Essence and with Corpse Monger. Um, you're trying to keep them off their discard pile, so you've got a couple of ways to attack it. With Corpse Monger, Guilt Demon, two Amnesias, and one Erratic Research. So that'll put us at nine ways to interact with our opponent's discard pile. So out of 60, that means we'll see it every, what, um, one and a half out of 10 is three out of 20. So every, every, uh, yeah, I mean, every 20 cards will see three, but <laughs> difficult to imagine that. So maybe something like, um, like every hand should have a, every, every seven cards should have about one. Three out of 21 would be exactly that, so an easier way of conceptualizing it. All right, and otherwise I just cut a bunch of cards that kind of fought against the game plan or doing something that was similar but different. So yeah, we're just doing the same thing that we were doing with the first half of our deck, but we're leaning into it. Um, I also think Fire Shaman is better in the shell because uh, you have lots of cards that are threats on their own, and Fire Shaman is a threat on its own, so if your opponent can't get rid of the Fire Shaman, it'll just keep dealing damage to various things. I also put a Flash Fire in this deck because it's a card that I like to hold on to a lot, which is useful because we have less loyalty. This deck's very greedy, it's only running, um, what, 27 of a primary color, so that's almost half the deck. Um, but, uh, Flash Fire, I usually won't play until I get a lot of value out of it. And we need a way to clear small things because I cut the Pyrosaur and Draka from this version, and I'm also playing Wave Transformation and Zombie Apocalypse. So we definitely want to have ways to deal with those in case we're forced to use one and the opponent gets a lot of tokens out of it. Go back to the Keeper of Secrets one. It's definitely my favorite of these avatars. I have to unlock some more. Which one do I want? Maybe Erratic Research. That would be fun. Or Steel Golem. Just because I love Steel Golem a lot. Alright, I'm up against Croc Master. Croc Master. Alright, we're going first. I don't have Raging Trex or Gudgeon or Jungle Queen. Those are the cards that I want to start with, or a zero cost card like um, Cave Troll. So this hand's, it's okay, it's reactive. I'll toss the Army of the Apocalypse, it doesn't do anything in my opening hand. And I'll toss one of these 
uh, wild cards. I mean, I guess these are all fine. I'll just be playing on my opponent's turn instead of on mine. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Easy, just draw your Agent Rex. No problem. All right, I'm going to hold off on the Flash Virus since that one is the card that I think the opponent will play around the most. So I'll reveal the other two. Basically, Flash Fire deals two damage to each champion and player, so it's really good against swarms of champions and also against uh, things like Thought Plucker and Muse that just have a small amount of health, but you really need to get rid of them ASAP. So don't want to reveal this because my opponent will play around it. It's very hard to play around Strafing Dragon because uh, you can just deal damage to them if you don't have a target in play. So this card will always do something relevant. And it's likely I'll end up playing it on their turn if they remove my Raging T-Rex and drawing two if they don't. Alright, Strafing Dragon is a Kong and a Hunting Pack. So we're about to be Kong here. That's fine. So I suppose, let's say that they play Kong and attack here. I mean... Could play Strafing Dragon and shoot them and block their Strafing Dragon because it's actually pretty likely that they don't have a good answer. Like they're going to Kong this and then pass basically. So I kind of like that play. Uh, even though I normally wouldn't do it because I'm not sure what else I'm going to do after the Kong happens. So I'm just going to do this right away because uh, almost definitely their best play is just Kong my T-Rex. And then I can block here, even though their gold's up. I think this is still a good play. If they want a hunting pack, my Strafing Dragon, then I can on my turn flash fire and attack for 12. All right. I think the Kong here is just too good to pass up. Go wild. All right, it's fine. They're not going to get to recycle out of that. So they're basically spending a zero cost card to make a expended six offense, six defense airborne champion. So kind of like a white dragon. All right, and then I'm going to Kong my T-Rex. All right, I'm going to start my turn. I could flash fire Kong here, but it's not super high value. I almost just want to gudgeon and then just block it with my gudgeon. Try and get a, an actual board clear here. Could Kong this Strafing Dragon. It's also a good play. And then the Kongs can fight and I can flash fire if I need to. Let's do that. I, because I have this Crystal Golem, which is a really nice play if they remove my Kong. And Hunting Pack is just a card that is not very good here. It would be awkward for them to play Hunting Pack here. And notice that an Epic cards in hand is a big deal. So. Um, you don't want to get too low on cards in hand or you'll start running low on plays that you can make. Now, I'm glad I made this play because, well, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Feeding Frenzy either way. I am going to go ahead and block here. They're going to have some trick, but I can flash fire to get rid of that after they get rid of mine. Alright, there's the trick. I guess they're playing some kind of wolf deck here with wolf spite and hunting pack. They have a hunting pack in hand. If I was them, I might just pass here. This is a good spot to pass. I'm going to go ahead and flash fire and then pass back. This way, uh, passing there was correct on their part because they have such a, a lead, and if my turn starts, then the Kong is safe. Interesting. It's gonna play Ankylosaurus and pass. All right, that's actually a reasonable play. Uh, I know one of their cards, Hunting Pack. I mean, how could they really punish me? Draka would not be great. Pyrosaur would be terrible. If I just play for Seagal here, I mean. They would probably just draw two, almost definitely. 
Hmm. And I kind of want to draw two. The question is, if we both draw two, who gets the advantage? I think I'm going to go ahead and play this Crystal Bomb here. I don't think they have a Pyrosaur on the wings. It just seems unlikely. Or Draka, I mean. It just doesn't seem like the kind of deck that would run Draka and Pyrosaur. They're slow. With Kong and stuff. Yeah, they're just going to draw two. Great. That's what I like to see. Play another Ankylosaurus. Alright. Triple Wither. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go ahead and probably just attack and then break it to draw two. I mean, I guess I don't even need to attack because I don't have any play that would make a difference on whether or not I attack here, so I'll just break it and draw two cards. And then probably play the Gudgeon. I could even guilt an attack here. Yeah, I'll just play this. I'll surprise attack it out just because I want to... Um, do I want to have a... I want to just find a board clear, really. So I want to draw more cards if possible. All right, pass the turn. So we smash and burn this, it'll be a seven, six, so it can block one of these and trade if I really want to. Same thing with smash and burn guild demon. All right, there's the hunting pack. So I am gonna flash fire these, probably now. And I can pass, is there any advantage to these being at five? Five. I guess what I can do is what Smash and Burn Fire Shaman is uh, five, eight, seven. Yeah, I don't really need that. Problem is, I'm just going to be taking a lot of damage here, and I haven't found one of my one of my ways to clear the board, which is a little unfortunate because I really need one right now. So let's see, I could Fire Shaman, Smash and Burn, that would draw me two, give me a eight, seven, which would be an eight, five after Flash Fire. That could block one of these Ankylosauruses. Um, deal three damage to one of these, so it has two health left, and then that dies to Guilt Demon. Let's do it. Not sure what I'll do if a wolf token attacks me first. I guess probably the same thing. I mean, we've already seen that our opponent doesn't have a lot of plays that are um, efficient. Not efficient, that are punishing. I don't think they have punishing plays in their deck. I'm making a lot of risky plays here because I'm trying not to die. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna draw two here, deal three damage to this. All right, very nice, I got some healing here. I should be okay at this point. If I play this, if they attack with, so the correct play for them is to attack with the seven, with the seven two, the ankle swords that's taken five damage, and then uh, see what I do, because I'll probably have some other trick for this. So that way they can bait out like a response for me. Yep. And if they have Rain of Fire here, I'm won't, I'll be in trouble. I'm just gonna assume that they don't. Hopefully, if they have lessons learned. That would also do it. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just gonna trade here and here. I could get really blown out by Rain of Fire here. I would just lose. It'd be what five. Three, four, five, and then I take 14 and go to two, and I'm probably dead to some other thing. It looks like they don't have it, so that's nice. So I'll take five from this Ankylosaurus, go down to 15, and then maybe they have a Stramping Dragon for my Fire Shaman. That would also be bad, but I think we're in a great spot. I think we're, I think we're doing all right. They pretty much have to have a Punisher here, like Stramping Dragon, or I can probably just win this game with the Drain Essence and the Corpse Monger. I'm 
right? I don't take any damage there because the way Breakthrough works is it, it just looks at the maximum shield. It doesn't look at... Uh, Alright, they have two Flame Strikes and a Scarf. So they're just going to double Flame Strike me, I guess. I'm going to start my turn. Do I have to gain health here basically immediately? That's fine now. I could pass. That's another option. A flame strike, flame strike, scarrow. So if they draw a wild card off it, if I play Corsmonger, pass. They draw a card off the top and then play Scarrow's revealing flame strike, flame strike, green card. And then my Corsmonger dies. I go down to nine. And they attack. And I die. It's my other option. I mean, I don't die. I play Drain Essence. I take two, go to seven. I need to top deck something that heals me. Or I can. Problem is, I can't just play Drain Essence here. That would be very bad. Double Flame Strikes got me. Um, so they Flame Strike me twice. Then I need to gain. I need to gain health before passing. It's probably course longer pass. Hope they don't draw a wild card. Do they have? Do they have Okay, they've only had wild cards, so they almost definitely will get it. They'll almost definitely play it. What if I drain essence pass? And then they flame strike me, and then I go to thirteen, and then I play Corpse Monger. Alright, that will work. That'll work. That's the play. <laughs> Try not to die to flame strike. <laughs> Anti flame strike. It doesn't even kill it. It's just deal not it just gain nine. I just play this as a bad inner piece. Alright, you know, flame strike me. And then I'm gonna play Corpse Monger and then pass because I need to block with it. But that is a okay. I'm gonna probably flame strike this and then I'll have to have to take eleven, go to two. But it'll be alive. So that's nice. Oh, okay, sure. Gonna write a clear blockers, block with this. Uh, go ahead and banish a champion to gain three health. I'll get rid of a con. Now let's see. Um, could smash and burn here. That would that would do what? Five, that'd be nine. Plus then I would be able to use my other smash and burn on that. Probably worth it. I'm being very greedy in this game. Probably the greediest I've been in a long time. But I think it's necessary. They, now they can flame strike this if they want. You can use their flame strike to save their Scaros. Sure. That's great for me. I just gained eight with that smash and burn. Oh! <laughs> Alright, last card in their hand, Scaros. I got a one here. That's fine. Alright. So the tough part is that Scaros, then they draw a wild card and play Scaros revealing the one wild card to deal one damage. So how do I not die? Hmm, I could get a Gushin into play. That's one way. The other way is gaining health. So let's see. <laughs> I need to Army of the Apocalypse would also be would also work tremendously, so I guess I'll plan for that. Go ahead and frantic digging here, discard Ancient Chant, and then recycle it, so that way I draw a bunch of cards. Go ahead and toss away the Ancient Chant and the Flash Fire, probably. I mean, I guess maybe the Drain Essence, since I don't have any way to get events back in my deck. That'll draw me two. It's not enough. I mean, they might not have all wild cards in their deck. They might just get unlucky and not draw a wild card off the top here, but I believe that I would lose. So I might as well just draw two cards to try and find an answer, and then I can zombie apocalypse that away. 
I guess I have Haynes. Do I have? I don't have Haynes in my deck. Yeah, I want to find another Corpse Monger. All right, I'm just going to draw two with this then. All right, now pass the turn. Discard a Jungle Queen. And they probably just play Skyros and kill me. But it's possible they don't draw another Wild card. Got it. Yeah, I think they do. Yep, that's it. <laughs> All right, I'm dead. Good game, Croc Master. All right, so far, this deck does not have a good track record, but I'm going to go ahead and probably just queue up again, try and get one more game in. Uh, I really want to see how this deck does, so I'm just going to go ahead and queue up for Constructed again with the same deck here. I might even just play that random 30 because there's someone in the arena right now. So I'll just do that. Oh, I don't have any gems. All right. <laughs> Another time. <laughs> I'll go ahead and... Uh, uh, I don't worry about that right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start construct again. All right. Let's see if we can get another game. Jam, jam another game with that deck. Maybe even make some changes. I usually like to make tweaks. You know, every, every two or three games. I don't... I don't like to take one game as uh, the end-all be-all as far as how the deck works because sometimes you don't get an accurate representation from a single game, even a single game of a matchup. You usually want to have at least two, then you'll have a good idea of how it feels. Now as far as gaining more health goes, I mean I could play Heinous Feast and I could play Consume, but in general I think that uh, running Drain Essence Gudgeon and Corpse Monger uh, is a pretty good pretty good way to go. I mean, I could run Lessons Learned or Reusable Knowledge. I guess those are both reasonable plays. Uh, what would I do for, if I was going to play Reusable Knowledge, I guess I could cut the Erratic Research for it. That would be something to try out. Or even Lessons Learned. I mean, I do like having nine copies of Ways to Manage the Discard Pile, and if this is Reusable Knowledge, then a lot of the time I'll be able to get back either Amnesia or Corpse Monger or Crave Demon. I mean, Guilt Demon. So yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Get some more, get some more games. Maybe I'll put an Avenging Angel in this deck just so I never draw it. It's basically like removing three cards from my deck. This is an ongoing joke about how the Avenging Angel is the elusive angel because I never draw it <laughs> in any game. I just uh, I just end up, I'm not sure where it goes, but it either doesn't get drawn or it gets drawn uh, when lethal has been found. Alright, let's see if I can find that that water bottle right now. We just had it. Alright. Excellent. The other thing, I could just quick patch as well. Let's do that. Play whatever. Whatever gets popped up. Maybe it'll be constructed. people are doing. Let's see. 
Our cutter's been jamming a lot of... I played against the cutter last time. It's always a fun, uh... It's always a fun game. But the cutter's actually really good at, uh, at constructed. Let's see. I wonder if it's been a, if it's the same people or different people playing a lot of random thirty. Like I don't see any of these. Ice type was on both. Yeah. Anyway, just put a link. See if we can try something else while we're waiting. We just cut out this original Ragnarok version. Since I've kind of replaced it a bunch of times. Let's see what could we do? I wanted to talk about like a good Sage tempo kind of deck. Maybe I can talk about Justice Prevails. This is actually a card that I really like. So you draw a card and then all of your zero cost champions gain righteous, plus three offense and plus, plus three defense. So it's really relevant about this card is that you don't have to play it with humans. You can play it with any zero cost cards. You can play it with, um, you can play it with zombie tokens if you want. In fact, we could even do that right now. Let's just go jump over to evil here. Let's make a, okay, let's put in the just value cards for this, for this type of deck, which would be Inherit the Meek. Because Panch is non tokens. So we'll, we'll have a lot of tokens to go with our Justice Prevails. We'll play Urgent Messengers. Maybe Martial Law. Sure. Let's put in one for now. We'll see how that is. Oh, alright, off against the cutter. Do it. Sure what just happened there. Oh. Something went wrong. I'm just gonna reopen it. Alright, we're in our game with the cutter. Playing constructed. Just the deck I want to play. Alright, uh, the opponent's going first, so we're gonna surprise deck out this Gudgeon. I'll toss the Corpse Monger, and I might just hold on to the other two. I mean, I should really toss the Army of the Apocalypse. It's just really sad when I don't draw it <laughs> all game. <laughs> all right, and then we'll keep this other draw too. Plus it has some other utility, which is nice. Cutter is having a different avatar. I think last time we played, the Cutter has had a Shambling Kark avatar. But I think that one is my favorite, Erratic Research. All right, it's gonna be Juggernaut. Revealing two Sage cards, Deadly Raid and Memory Spirit to draw a card. And then I'm going to get attacked. Well, I'm probably going to surprise deck out something, but then just not block. It is probably going to be the Jungle Queen because it attacks back for more. So yeah, do that. Um, I mean, I guess I guess I need more cards in hand because it's a good chance I'll play the Striking Dragon instead. So I'll just play the Gudgeon here, take the damage. I might just play a Striking Dragon on my turn to take the Gudgeon out. I mean, to take the Juggernaut out. Because it is a lot of damage. Alright, I'm going to be at 19, which is a pretty big hit to just take. But a lot of the time against a turn 1 Gudgeon, you just have to do that. Now, this Fire Shaman is going to be great because Fire Shaman plus another Wild Card is going to take that Gudgeon, I mean, to take that Juggernaut out for me. I keep mixing up those two. Gudgeon and Juggernaut for some reason. All right, we're gonna draw a card and deal three damage to that. And then we'll be passing the turn. Save the Striping Dragon for this Memory Spirit that might come out. But I mean, I'm guessing that, that uh, what we're gonna see is a draw to, maybe Deadly Raid to draw to, and then a board clear on the Cutter's turn. 
That's what my guess would be. Since we have a lot of stuff in play, that is scary. This would be a good time to clear the board. Then I can Strafing Dragon to deal 5 damage to the Cutter and start off with Threat and Play. But I'm not sure what board clears this deck plays. If it just plays, if it ignores those, if it plays, you know, Wave of Transformation or something like that. If it's an evil deck that plays Apocalypse, Port Splash is good for Divine Judgment. All right, just another Juggernaut. <laughs> sure. I'm gonna show the wave transformation, but no big deal. All right, I'm just gonna dome the opponent for a bunch and then double block. So Carter's gonna take eight here from both of those. Then I'll just block with both of these as a group. That way I don't take any damage and I'll lose one of the two, whichever one the Cutter wants to get rid of. Everything's about to be waved here. Yeah. Now, in theory, the cutter could vanishing my jungle queen, and then I would take three. But no big deal. Start my turn, and normally I'd be wary of Ice Drake here, but I'm untargetable, so I'll just attack with the Gudgeon by itself to start us off. And there's the Wave Transformation. So I'm probably just going to frantic digging away my Wave Transformation, trying to find, you know, like a real play for this turn, something like. Striking Dragon, or, um, I mean, Army Apocalypse is okay, except that we get hit with this Juggernaut here, so if I, if I were to find a Guilt Demon or something, I'd probably play that, but, uh, I mean, as it stands, Gudgeon's also fine, it just is weak to a lot of things. We'll just toss this out, that's fine. There's, there's the Guilt Demon. I mean, frantic digging, it's nice to save for when you want, if you also have army apocalypse in your hand, because you can frantic digging away your crystal golem or what have you, and then army the apocalypse it back into play. So it's basically if you get to play the card that you're frantic digging in addition to the cards that are in your discard pile. Now, being untargetable always feels good because then you can't be flame struck, or as I call it, the past tense of flame strike. Uh, or just, there's so many random things that it dodges. Amnesia, not that. <laughs> Alright, what do we see? Shadow Wimp and, um, I forget the name of the other one. Alright, so the question is, what am I going to do about this? Now, it's probably just time to wave transformation. Although, I mean, I guess it would also be fine to block, to have this block there, and then just not take any damage. So in that case, what I want to do is frantic digging away something in this hand. And then I would potentially armor the Apocalypse this and Shrek and Dragon back into play next turn. And I'd be drawing two with Flash Fire here. So I'm just going to frantic digging away the Flash Fire. Well, if I'm going to army, then let's just take it. And then I'll draw two with Flash Fire and then I can frantic digging away a champion that I draw off the top before Guilt Demon, Swing, plus army. Interesting. Well, I'll still draw two. I could even guilt demon away the, the juggernaut and block here if I wanted to. Sure. It's 
possible this deck wants to run Spore Beast. Because I am vulnerable to things like Rage just randomly. Alright, how are we going to handle this? Probably just block with the Gudgeon and pass. It doesn't mean I can be amnesia, which would be very sad. But also not the end of the world. Make it look like I'm going to do some kind of bounce all this turn. Go ahead and frantic digging away at Cave Troll. Or I guess I'll just do it with the Raging T-Rex. Don't need to hide anything at this point. Recycle away the events. And then let's frantic digging again. Although this time I won't. Uh, you know what I'll do is I'll flash fire here first. And then I'll frantic digging away the jungle queen. Cycle frantic digging flash fire. Then play Army of the Apocalypse. Boop. <laughs> Value down. Alright. <laughs> now they do have a Memory Spirit. Um, so we have to worry about that a little bit. It's not really the end of the world. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and attack with this. So that if they want to play Memory Spirit, it won't get a deadly raid back. It'll just be for nothing. For no value. Turned. Could even last year if I want, which would give me three damage. Okay, nope. Sure. Gonna take it. Have to block this for sure. We're not gonna block that. So if I last year, then I get five for zero. Pretty good deal. I could Corpse Monger swing, but what happened is they would play a Shadow Infant block. So I'm not going to do that. I'll just pass. Because this has to be cleared again, so the whole board's about to be wiped. Probably buy another wave transformation. Unless I'm somehow dead to something. Like a deadly raid would kill me. Oh, here comes the deadly raid. Oh, uh, interesting. Last time this killed me, but I am, I'm still in Targdable, so I should be okay. <laughs> I'm kind of expecting a deadly raid here. I'm kind of expecting, in which case I'll be forced to wave transformation, unfortunately. I guess I could amnesia them first, just in case I draw Kong off the top. That would uh, that would prevent me from this prevent this from happening. Oh, I also win with uh, Fire Shaman off the top because then I can just play it because it has Ambush with Jungle Queen and then play Surprise Attack for the win. That would also work. All right, just gonna banish everything. Probably just, they probably just assume they were dead, but alas. <laughs> Keep saying alas today for some reason. I guess I'll draw Tooth Wave Transformation. All right, there's two damage. I just need one now. One of these wolves get through, gets through. I'm 
I mean, I could be dead to something like Flame Strike Fireball, but hopefully that's not the case. I mean, usually in this deck I also run Force Mage Apprentice, but I'm not here. It's possible that Force Mage Apprentice should find its way in. It's just difficult to make cuts from a deck where you like all the cards. It's basically my experience. Let's see if we can get in with all of these wolves here. So far, so good. Oh. I'm gonna make a three one. Oh, all right, all right. Well, can I stop this? I got flash fire on my own things. Or I could wave transformation everything. <laughs> make them into wolves again. Uh, they're both fine. I'm not crazy about either one. Oh, actually, mm, I can't flash fire and lash. But if I could lash this twice, that would do it. But I can't do that. Let's see. I mean, I think I want to wave here because I don't want to... If I flash fire my own stuff, I don't have good follow-up play. I just play something and then pass. So I'll just wave. And then uh, we'll go to post-block events. I'll play probably just this course longer and gain another three health, but I am mean, in a pretty good spot. I'll just amnesia them. Drain my waves here. And then I'll uh, pass the turn. I could even play this cave troll. But I, I do have to worry about uh, war. What's that one? I forget the name of it, but the one that's a 10 10 that uh, was played against me earlier that banishes all opponents to zeros, War Machine. War Machine would banish all of these, and then I need to flash fire those tokens, and then block the War Machine with Surprise Attack Crystal Golem, or just wave a, a third time. <laughs> Usually when I'm ahead on board, I don't I don't try to add anything else to it. Right, no Justice prevails this time. The reason I re-cleared the board is because I didn't want the Justice Prevails to gain cut or a bunch of health. Alright. I usually do something like that on my turn. I, I like to, to even out the tokens. Okay, interesting. Sure. Uh, yeah, alright. I'm not really sure what I could be punished by. I guess I could lose to, like, a flame strike. Like, it's not even unreasonable, really, for me to flash fire here and then surprise attack Crystal Golem, but honestly, it's not scary. I'm not really sure what game, what game we're playing here. I'm not sure why I should be afraid of these uh, human tokens. I guess maybe double Brave Squire would kill me. Maybe I'm about to get double Brave Squired, but I don't think so. If I am, if I get double race card, I'll be, I'll be sad. <laughs> or like go wild, that would be six, five, six, seven. Go wild, go wild would do it, or rage, rage, or go wild, rage, or some combination of two go wilds, rages, lashes, and brave squares. All right, I'm taking one. Ooh. Draw two with that, and then flash fire. All right. 
had the flash fire in hand, but I wanted to draw two just in case the two I drew changed my, my mind with the flash fire. All right, I set the turn. Not dead to anything, to most things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fling this guilt demon in and see if I got it. Dead to, dead to flame strike plus something else that deals damage. I could play the Drain Essence just immediately to gain nine. I could play the Corpse Monger immediately to gain three. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just so unlikely that I die here. I think we got it. There's a draw two there to find an answer. Ooh, all right. It's not over yet. <laughs> it's not over till it's over. All right. Uh, if I lash this, then that'll be lethal. So I'm just going to go ahead and try and win. That's why I put Lash in this deck instead of Rage as one of, is because the recall is more relevant in this deck than uh, it would be in a lot of other decks. I like having that flexibility to give plus four attack and breakthrough when necessary. What? Another one? <laughs> That's crazy. All right. <laughs> wow. All right, we're gonna Vop drop the Cave Troll and pass the turn. The game's not over yet. Not over yet. That is crazy. They had two cards in hand, so Cutter played Urgent Messengers and found it at least a second spike trap, if not both. All right, we're gonna block here. If I take this one, I could die to, uh, <laughs> could actually die to Flame Strike. It's not very likely though. But Cutter has been very lucky against me. The real question is, do I just play Drain Essence here? And I feel like it's such a waste. I could get blown out. I could actually lose this game if I Drain Essence that and Cutter drops down a real threat. So I'll just pass. Pretend like I don't have anything. Maybe this will get buffed again. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and wait transformation then. <laughs> such a slow turnaround. What happens if I drain essence here? I take one and I go to eight. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna wave. I think that's the play. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this game is ridiculous. <laughs> oh man, this might even be a terrible play, but we'll see. Now the real question will be, do I do I recall Lash and play it here if it gets blocked by a single wolf token? Yeah, I don't think the answer is yes. I think the answer is no. Although, if I was the cutter, I would always block with one, even if I didn't have an answer. I'd always block with one. Because you have to pretend like, uh, like it's safe to do so. Because you really need to be greedy. Anyway, I am going to let that happen here. We're not going to tempt fate. And then it's going to be probably just Kong one pass. You know, it's kind of a weak play. I'm still gonna do it. I could even recall Lash and pass. That's not even a bad play either. But I do want to do something in the event that I have to worry about just dying here. All right. Go ahead and just play Corpse Monger and gain three health. Banish my own Guilt Demon. Could even leave it to block first, but that probably would have been a better play. <laughs> just in general. 
Anyway, this green essence is probably going there. This is blocking one of these wolf tokens, which means I'm taking four plus eight is 12. So I'm dead. No, wait, no, I gained nine. All right, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm gonna be at nine. I have this insurgency. <laughs> and then they can't, he can't insurgency attack unless he has an answer for my Kong attacking. And I've got Lash back up in the discard pile. Well, this is a game. Every time I play against Cutter, it's it's a crazy game. Like that double spike trap was so unexpected. I always play around the first cut, the uh, the first answer, but I usually just assume that my opponent doesn't have two answers, especially when they're long cards, because you'll lose more games than you'll win. Interesting. Gladius. Okay, so. Gladius, the synergy with Gladius is you can, you use this to make three human tokens, right? If you play, if you play this, then you play Secret Legion on your opponent's turn with Gladius out. Gladius gains Blitz, and then you can use it to make three humans on their turn. I think Cutter's just playing, oh, okay, play, Cutter's just playing Gladius here because, in order to preempt, basically. But we'll see. It's gonna start off by banishing. Eh. I don't even think I want to start off by doing that. I think I need to save that for blocking. But I will attack with this Kong here. We'll see what happens. I can recall Lash and play it. I am running low on plays here. My only off turn play is recall Lash. Maybe Inherence the Meek is, is on deck here. Reusable knowledge for spike trap, okay. Sure. I think I win. I think there's no way to stop me lashing it. See what happens here. Is there going to be a is there going to be a hasty retreat? That's actually the only answer that <laughs> that is possible. A hasty retreat. Yeah, because they can't even play three. <laughs> I guess like something like lightning strike, lightning strike. Yeah, two lightning strikes or 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 spike trap, lightning strike or something like that. But I mean, this has to be. You'd have to have hasty retreat here. That would, that would be it. That's the end-all be-all, a CAC retreat. Oh my god. What is that? <laughs> what? Alright, alright, we got this. We got this. Oh man. I don't know how this is happening. <laughs> okay. Alright. So we have to recall Lash as our gold, and also oh, this is not good. If he plays Insurgency, the humans will be five ones. And he's going to make three humans first, and then play Insurgency. So that's four, five, six, seven, five ones. So that's thirty-five. So if I block one, it's thirty. I'm dead. Maybe Cutter won't notice. And we'll just play Insurgency and then attack, or play Insurgency and then use it, but assuming that Cutter notices and uses Gladius then plays Insurgency, then I'm dead. 100%. Yep. Yep. Good game, Cutter. Good game. Oh, man, feels rough. I mean, that was a, that was actually a very good game. That was a very good game.
All right. Well, uh, so that'll be it for the stream today. I'm going to be calling it, and then I'll be playing on Wednesday at 8. But uh, until then, good games, and uh, I'll see you next time.